draw fast on mobile GPUs with Vulkan. So what do I mean by mobile? Most of the time when people say mobile GPU, what they really mean is a tile-based GPU. Not all mobile GPUs are tile-based, but most are. This means that the render target is split into separately rendered tiles, so the GPU can keep resources needed to render a single tile stored in on-chip memory, which is fast and inexpensive power-wise to access. The flip side of this is that bandwidth for reading off-chip is limited. So, if you're familiar with desktop rendering, you may know more about immediate renderers. Those work in a fairly straightforward manner. You describe your scene as a series of draw calls. Draw me triangle one, two, three. And the GPU receives these draw calls and executes them as they're received, committing each one out to the frame buffer. So your, your scene builds up one draw call at a time. On the flip side, tiling renderers are a little more complicated. You still describe your scene as a series of draw calls, but the GPU, rather than executing them when it receives them, bins them. This means that it's keeping track of which draw calls affect which tiles. When it, you've finished describing your scene, then it executes the list of draw calls affecting a single tile and then commits the results to the frame buffer before moving on to another tile. So your scene builds up one tile at a time. This gets interesting when it intersects with multiple pass rendering techniques. These are used for a lot of things, one of the most obvious being post-processing effects. There's stuff like tone mapping, exposure control, and HDR that essentially act as color filters. You render your scene in one pass, and then in a subsequent pass, you apply a filter to it, using one pixel from the previous pass to determine the output for the current pass. There are also post-processing effects which use multiple pixels. They need information about neighboring pixels to determine the current pixel of the subsequent pass, like blur, bloom, and focus control. Uh, there's also deferred shading where you're uh, rendering a lot of material data out into buffers and then using that to render your scene in another pass. And this has been particularly painful for mobile devices because of that bandwidth and memory pressure. There's also volumetric effects where you may want to accumulate things like participating media across multiple passes. So what this looks like on a tiling renderer without the Vulkan multi-pass mechanism is that for each pass, you have to render each tile and commit the results to the frame buffer. Then later passes must reload that data, loading back from that expensive off-chip memory. Multiple, uh, multi-sampling, MSAA, multiplies this off-chip cost because rather than a single pixel, you are having to commit multiple samples to off-chip memory. This adds up incredibly quickly. So Vulkan adds the multi-pass mechanism directly to the API. This allows you to describe all of those passes as a series of sub-passes. That means that for each tile, you can render all of the sub-passes before moving on to the next tile. This allows relevant data to stay on chip. And as an ad added bonus, you can resolve multi-sample after the last sub-pass and store only the single pixel resolved result. So there are some tips for using this well. First, you want to make sure that the attachments to your frame buffer have the load and store disposition set correctly. Basically, you don't want to use load op load or store op store unless you actually need to load or store. Otherwise, you're paying overhead that you don't need to. And you can use transient attachment for data that you never store, like the traditional use of a depth buffer, in order to avoid allocating any off-chip memory to store them. Also, you want to set your dependencies when using this mechanism as by region. Otherwise, by default, they're considered to be global, and you have to wait for all of the pixels of the previous pass to complete before beginning your current pass. That defeats the purpose. Um, and for now, you're, if you're using this mechanism, you can only benefit uh, if your subpass needs to access a single pixel from the prior pass, otherwise it's not by region. Uh, so blur and bloom can't benefit yet. There's room for this to change in the API in the future. The upside is this is efficient. Tiling renderers can save clock cycles and power by avoiding those off-chip read writes, which opens the door for rendering techniques that are previously too thought too costly on mobile devices. But mobile devices aren't the only ones that benefit. Immediate renderers can still do things like avoid allocating memory outside of the cache for transient attachments. So armed with this knowledge, I hope you get out there and you draw things fast. Thanks.